Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Kinks and Beatles Daily Deep Dive. This is your host, Tony Fry, and you are listening to episode 218. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. Um, I just want to let you know to swing by herohabit.com for all the information about previous episodes, um, other articles written about the Kinks and the Beatles, and a way that you can contribute to help support this podcast and keep it going for the many years to come that it'll take to get through all these songs. Uh, if you're not new to this podcast, welcome. I hope you're still enjoying it. Today we're talking about A Long Way From Home by The Kinks, which is uh, released November 27th, 1970 on the Lola vs. Power Man and the Money Go Round Part 1. And I'll be honest, this is not one of my favorite songs on the album, but I've already said that about like seven songs um, are my favorite songs on this album, so it's tough to use that as a metric of my tastes, because while it's not my favorite, I do like this track quite a bit. And it's not my least favorite, we all know that title goes to ape man so in a lot of ways musically not lyrically this song feels like a sister piece to yes sir no sir from arthur um but with a slightly more mature uh, arrangement but if you listen to the way they build it um, it builds faster but um like mixed drumming is kind of it's not as militaristic but that wouldn't fit the the subject matter of the song but it's just it, it Feels like a companion piece, musically. But that's where it ends. Lyrically, it's nothing. Um, But the first thing I want to point out about the arrangement is the bass playing. Because John Dalton is really killing it on this track. And this is why he's my favorite of the Kinks' several bassists. Um, He's playing the bass on the higher register of the instrument for a lot of the song. But he's playing an almost Baroque counterpoint at points um, to raise vocal melody. And you hear like... Um, some kind of classically kind of sounding fills. And then he throws in something that just sounds like straight up James Jamerson, like a a Motown fill. So it's a really gorgeous bass line. Uh, And it's not what we're used to hearing from Dalton, particularly on these slower tracks. Um, Though I'm not surprised. I'm not using that as a criticism or anything. Because so much of his bass work is melodic and incredibly inventive. Uh, It's just, this is a standout moment for him, in my opinion. So way to go, John Dalton. Everything about this song is very quiet and understated. But there's still a power to it. And that really grabs your ears, uh, aside from the gorgeous melody. That power that comes through really grabs your ears and and forces you to pay attention. And it's not a long song, but it is a good palate cleanser between this time tomorrow, which I talked about having like this frenetic rhythm section that's almost on the verge of losing control while Ray is singing in slow motion on top of it. Uh, and then it's followed by Rats, which is a straight-up rocker. So this is kind of a a good palate cleanser to be like, okay, we have come off of the barely controlled chaos of This Time Tomorrow and calmed it down a little bit and brought it back down to earth. But with that kind of rock intensity underneath it, it leads you right back into Rats. Um, pretty cool, I think. It's it's good sequencing. This whole album is sequenced pretty good. I can't really think of much that I would change sequencing wise i've read several interpretations of the lyrics to this song um some say that it's being sung to like a successful rock star probably the one we talked about in top of the pops right he gets to the top and he has a huge song and now he's a big rock star but he's obviously succumbing to the excesses of fame and the excesses of his own ego others believe that it's an open letter to dave uh, I can see the verses being about Dave. You know, you've come a long way from the runny nose and scruffy kid I knew. That could definitely be about Dave um, pretty easily. But the bridges are a bit cruel to make the subject sing backing vocals to. I mean, imagine you're Dave and Ray comes into the studio and says, I wrote this song about you and I want you to do some harmonies when I sing. Now you think you're wiser because you're older and you think that uh, money buys everything and you think that you need no one to guide you, but you're still a long way from home. I mean, that's a bit harsh, uh, but I guess also completely plausible considering their sibling dynamic through the years. Honestly, I tend to lean more towards this being a song to the unnamed character, quote unquote, of this entire concept album. If you read it as words of wisdom to a rock star who's lost his way a bit, it ties in nicely with the other song subjects, right? At its heart, this is an album that's the that's a concept album. It's the, the concept is about 
the music business, right? And all that it brings to you and all that it takes away and the ups and downs and the pitfalls of being in this wonderful, horrible business. And that's not to say that it isn't inspired by Dave. Like I said, those first few lines are straight up sound like an uh, older brother talking to a younger brother. Uh, but it adds to the concept if you read it as part of the narrative instead of as an internal commentary between two brothers. As far as song form goes, it's basically a binary song form that goes A, B, A, B. And while you could consider the B section as a chorus, it's structured more like a bridge. All right, and this B section is the part, and now you think you're wiser because you're older. That's the part that's the B section. So like so many songs we've covered so far on this podcast, I'd say that the track doesn't have a proper chorus as much as it has a bridge and with the common refrain that the title line ends the bridge both times they sing it. Um, but it doesn't feel like a chorus. I'm open to debate on that, but it's not really that important because regardless what you call the B section, the form is still ABAB. I just have my ears want to hear something specific for a chorus and they just don't hear it on this. This sounds like a bridge between two verses. Harmonically, this is one of Ray's simpler songs, which really highlights how good he is at composing melodies over relatively simple chord progressions. Some of his beautiful melodies are over incredibly complex and, and moving chord progressions. And some of them are just straight ahead, simple stuff. Um, that said, I couldn't find a single source online that got this very simple chord progression correct. Um, the A section mostly hovers over a D chord. Hang on, I'm moving my headphones out of the way so I can grab my guitar. Uh, and he's playing that D chord and he's just using various suspensions, the four. So you got the D, D sus four, D sus two. Right. It's a pretty common um, move when you're playing on that D chord because it's all in your pinkies or lifting your ring finger or whatever. Um, and then he eventually goes to a C chord and then a G. That's pretty much it for the verse. And then the B section, he jumps to an A chord, which is the dominant, and works his way back down to D. So it's a 5-4-1 progression that just repeats over and over. That's it. Except for that C chord, everything here is in the key of D. Nothing too crazy. Um, where a lot of the places that I've seen get the chords wrong is that they don't include the C chord. They list it a lot of times as a D sus two, and this and this sound completely different. So I don't know why everybody's hearing that that way. And then almost all of them put the verse or the bridge rather, the B section on an A seven. And I mean, technically it probably could be, but I don't think um, they're actually playing an A seven. If you hear it against the melody, it makes more sense just to keep it as a regular A. Uh, but that one, like I said, technically probably could be an A7 because it is the dominant chord. So we've just got this simple. Come a long, long way from the runny nose and scruffy kid I knew. You had such good ways. And remember the little things that always made you smile, made you happy. Now you think you're older because you're old. You think money buys everything, and you think you need no one to guide you, but you're still alone. That's it. It's a pretty song. It's very simple, like I said. Um, it's very, you know, gorgeous melody and everything. 
but it just works. Every all the components of this of this piece work together and make a really pretty little gem uh, on this album. What are your thoughts? Give me a call, 925-494-1739, or email me, kinksandbeats at herohabit.com. And like I mentioned, go to herohabit.com to find out everywhere that you can follow us online. We just started a TikTok account, Hero Habit. So if you're on TikTok, follow us there. All right, I will talk to you guys all later. Stay safe out there and take care.